everybody. Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. The team's tournament is a chuglin, as Mark Ellis would say, and he is here. And Mark, what a battle we have today, because if you look as far as faction wars, maybe not as much. Because if you look, corruption is in first place. They're doing very well. Uh, you also, you have uh, Sam Levine, who they had, a, you know, an okay run. Sam will tell you that he, Sam had some problems in the beginning of the season. But he had Ethan Irwin, who won him some points in the singles tournament. And then in a very, very uh, kind of a move that we didn't see coming, he paired up. Ethan Irwin and Andrew Guy, who looked like Andrew was done. We didn't know where Andrew was going to go. He's like, he had kind of, after his match with Bateman, we were like, well, we might never see Andrew again. And then he came back to manage Ethan and looked like everything was normal. It, sort of, Chris. I mean, look, in the landscape of the team's tournament, which we're now in the thick of, this is a very exciting contest because we have four competitors, two per team, that we all have seen be great in singles and in teams matches past. But when you do look at the managerial aspect of this, there's no doubt how locked in Shannon Barney is as the queen of corruption. But there have been some, I think, fair questions asked about the usual suspects and this particular pairing. Is Sam Levine really invested in this? And did he pair Ethan and Andrew because he thinks they have the stuff to win? Or is this more of just a, hey, I've seen Andrew's erratic behavior in past matches. I want to make sure one of my guys is okay. So I'm going to pair him with the steadiest player I have in my stable. I think it's fair to ask that and maybe Sam can shed some light on that later on in the match well that's certainly a possibility but it's also a possibility that Andrew Guy is the stronger teams player Andrew Guy has been to the finals of the ultimate schmodown twice he is a I think he's something like 12 or 13 and 6 he is he is phenomenal in teams it's his strength he's made it very clear that he loves teams teams is his division and his partners have been strong he had his partner in Ben Bateman he has partner in Drew McQueenie and what a teammate he now has in the former champion Ethan Irwin now you flip to the other side and you have two rookie hot shots these are some of the best competitors we have seen in the rookie class in general marisol mckee had a phenomenal debut against bonnie somerville she was confident she was calm but it was the match against paul oyama that made people say wait a minute this lady is for real and it was not even she didn't win that match but it was the way that she played it was how cool calm and collected that she was throughout the match her partner has done something that no one has done. This guy won the entire tournament. He won the entire singles tournament. And the way he did it, he was a play-in match. Everyone else had to win five to win. He won six and won the damn thing and has a title shot at Schmodown Spectacular. So he's got all the clout. No one's beaten this guy in any division. This is the first team match he's played, but he's never lost. So 6-0 and in his entire run, Adam the Coyote Collins. Yeah, Christian, when you add those three C's to the fourth C, Collins, you say, okay, this could be one impressive squad, but they are so, so young and so inexperienced, even given the matches that Collins played on his way to winning the whole thing in the singles tournament. And so what you worry about is perhaps a sophomore slump. We see it in sports all the time. So when they come back to this tournament and now it's time to play again, do you come in a little cocky? Do you come in better with more experience? Will this be the second season for, say, an RG3 or the second full season right. for, say, a Patrick Mahomes? We're about to find out. Well, we're going to find out because this team has been deceptive. And will they be able to clamp their house of justice on the lethal weapons? We're going to find out. And here's a story on how we got here. There is a wild spirit out there wreaking havoc called the Coyote. And the ladies finally found her force of nature to fuse her powers with Ever seen Princess Mononoke? That's the dynamic we're about to bring to the table here, folks. Marisol is salivating. She is so ready to serve justice in that team's tournament, and her and Adam together are gonna scare a lot of people. The queen is pleased, thank you very much. I could not be more pleased to introduce into the team's tournament Lady Justice and the Coyote as deception. <laughs> Adam Collins may have won the entire singles tournament, but he needs to do something in the team's tournament before he's in consideration for Rookie of the Year. 
correction. Shut up. We got peanut butter and jelly. Thelma, Louise, you got Irwin, and you got Guy. Uh, obviously, Adam is great. Marisol is great. <laughs> this is Ethan Owen and Andrew Guy. Andrew is a legend. I'm trying to make my way, but I think I'm getting there. Each absolutely deadly in their own special way. And together, I think there will be no survivors. I still, I think the Adam Collins hype train is going to keep chugging along. And uh, I think Marisol might turn out to be the MVP of that match, in fact. You know, it'd be, that'd be a great story. In her infinite wisdom, the Queen has joined Lady Justice and the Coyote to keep this league on notice as deception, the team nobody saw coming this season. Will they work well together? Will they clash? I don't know, you could say they go together like peas and carrots. Well, I've heard the Howl of Justice on the way. It's time to heed the call. Remember this, Lethal Weapons. We are deception. And we know more than you do. And we're back. And oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at that trailer that we get. Because look at the hype. Like I mentioned, Andrew Guy has the most experience here. Out of everybody inside of teams, he's been to the dance, the finals uh, twice. Ethan Irwin has held the championship. Uh, Adam Collins has won a tournament, a singles tournament already. And Marisol McKee is fired up and ready to go. So uh, with that, with corruption, if corruption wins this in tournament again, it's going to be hard to say that they're not going to win the entire faction championship. So this could be the chance for usual suspects to take them out and let other factions have an opportunity. Here is the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney, and the inglorious one, Sam Levine. Sam, I got to mm. start with you, dude. So this team, yeah. uh, we, we saw what happened last time. You and I were as flabbergasted as anybody when we saw Andrew Guy. Just uh, We didn't know where he was, what happened, what how he was going to handle if he was ever going to play again. So then you make the decision to team him and Ethan up together. How does that come about? Um, you know, uh, it was something that I had been thinking about uh, after, uh, you know, the great Drew McWeeny uh, uh, retired. And like you said it yourself, Andrew Guy thrives in teams. There is just, it is a left brain, right brain thing for him when he's got a stable mate. And uh, I could think of no one better uh, for him than Ethan Irwin. I think they are going to be lights out together. So, I mean, just, it was such a natural fit to me. It did not require much thought. Excuse me, that's 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 Angie. It's uh, not this one. This one is still fast to sleep, I believe. So if you're looking at the usual suspects anyway, Christian, and you say, well, maybe Ethan Irwin can be the, the Dave Ross to the Dexter Fowler of Andrew Guy. You go to the other side of the ledger and you look at corruption. Now, Shannon, you have earned the title of Queen with a capital Q, but do you fear an opponent like the usual suspects simply because they may not be vying for manager of the year honors or to get to the top of the standings. They may just be relishing in their ability to play spoiler. And sometimes that is the most dangerous competition. Agree or disagree? Uh, hard disagree. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at them. I don't even really need to say much. Um, look, the threat is there. It's imminent. It's always present. Uh, but I'm not really worried about it today. I, I don't. Uh, I don't anticipate a miracle play. We know exactly what to expect out of Ethan. He's going to be great. We know nothing to expect from Guy because he's either going to be a lunatic or he's going to be locked in. Regardless, he's going to ride the coattails of Ethan, and they're going to have to work really, really hard for a win here today. And I just don't see it happening. You know, the other thing I got to ask here, Shannon, because how important is it to win this tournament? Because you had. 
Adam Collins, who basically took you guys. You guys were in trouble, and he took you all the way, and now you have a significant lead in first place. You win this tournament, and you might lock up the entire championship. So is it? are you excited to try to get this done, or you're not thinking about that yet? You're just trying to get from one match to the next. One match at a time. I'm not going to lie and say uh, we're not looking forward to the possibilities because I think we're in a really great position to capitalize on this. But yeah, we have to go one match at a time. There's no other option. Uh, this tournament is entirely stacked. And as we've seen from the singles tournament, if you've learned anything, anything can happen. Uh, it was it's the, it's the season of the upsets, and I am not putting all my eggs in any basket yet. We are just going to take this one match at a time. Uh, Sam. Christian, one more question here for Sam Levine real quick. Sam, is a win here today worthy of breaking open that Johnny Walker blue that you received after the Chicago Cubs won the World Series? Fair question, Mark. Thanks so much for asking. Um, uh, for me to crack that actual bottle open, I'm going to have to get called up to the Cubs and participate in a World Series victory. Uh, so possible, but unlikely. Christian, right. can we check on that? Does Shannon Barney uh, own the Cubs as well? Has she acquired that team yet? Do we know? I'm not convinced. I don't see a bottle. I'm not convinced it was already uh, trying. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to now remove. Good luck to both of you, so to both Sam and to Shannon. Mark, I'm ready to go. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm getting a late word from Sam Levine. That bottle was actually consumed during game six. He didn't even wait until they won the series. So Thank forget you. about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Introducing first, representing Corruption, making their Schmodown team debut, Lady Justice Marisol McKee and Adam the Coyote Collins. This is Deception. There they are, Lady Justice, Adam the Coyote Collins. All right, Lady Justice, let's start with you. We haven't seen you since the uh, singles tournament with that great match against Oyama, your teammate here takes the whole entire tournament, and then you're matched up as a team. So do you make the approach to Shannon and say, put me in there, or are you given the call and you have to think about it? How does that go? Um, there's nothing to think about here. There's absolutely no hesitation. This is a pretty, pretty natural, pretty natural fit. Um, and this is the way that fate meant it to be. Um, and when I heard that coyotes howl, I knew there was only one place and that was by my side. Yeah, it, that coyote we're talking about here, Adam Collins, of course. So, Adam, you're coming off a huge win in the singles tournament, taking the whole tourney, as a matter of fact. But coyotes generally can be loners from time to time. So how do you feel about now running in a pack with Lady Justice? Well, like she said, it was a natural fit. I mean, uh, when we both debuted, we both showed up. And we, we, we proved to the Schmodown that we were here for real. We're not just rookies trying to hang out with the big dogs and show that we're, we're cool enough to stick around. We gained victories, and we're going to keep doing it in this tournament. Uh, my run was great, but this is a reset. And Lady Justice and I are here to take this to the next level. All right. So let me ask you this then, Marisol, because you have... You know, uh, I, as I mentioned, your opponents are not first timers. They have a lot of experience. Andrew Guy has been to the finals of this tournament twice. Ethan Irwin is a former champion. So what are your thoughts on your opponents going into this match? No, our opponents certainly have experience behind them. There's no denying it. Um, but the... The opportunity here is the disparity in the bond, you know? Erwin is venerable, true, sure. Um, but Guy's foundation is dubious, you know, right now. I think it will completely crumble in cross-examination, and that's not the case. That's not the case with the two of us. What we don't have, um, we're not long in the tooth in terms of experience, um, but there's, there's a soul vision here in what we both want to accomplish. 
And final question to you, Adam, before I bring in your opponents here. Ethan Irwin um, is someone who also has won the singles tournament, and he is a champion. He is someone who has beaten your upcoming opponent, Dan Merle, as has Andrew Guy. So do you look into these opponents when you're playing them, and what are your thoughts on these two competitors as you get ready to face them? Yeah, so I, uh, I've seen all the game tape uh, many times on these gentlemen. Uh, their, their careers are very storied, as, as uh, Lady Justice uh, mentioned. Uh, I was hoping for a chance to play Ethan in the singles tournament, so this is a silver lining. I'm really glad to be in the ring with him. And Andrew Guy, as, as uh, we've acknowledged already, he's a bit of a wild card, but we're going into this expecting him to play at his highest level. We've seen what he's capable of, and we'll see what these two bring out in each other. We know we're a known entity. Uh, we know what we can do, and we're here to prove it today. All right. Thank you to both Adam Collins and to Lady Justice. Good luck to you. We'll see you in a moment. And their opponents representing the usual suspects making their Schmodown team debut. Dastardly Drew Guy and the former movie trivia schmodown champion of the world, Ethan Big Time Irwin, the Lethal Weapons. There they are, the Lethal Weapons. Andrew, I got to start with you. Um, I know this was something that you wanted to do for a while is team up with Ethan. It was the reason you came back. There's been, uh, you know, some change even when you managed Ethan in his match. The chemistry seemed to be there and you seem to be back to the Andrew guy that we knew kind of. What's, what's changed? Uh, you know, not a lot. Just excited to be here. Really excited to play against these two. Uh, they seem really um, deserved of being in the league. You know, really entertaining, you know, playing really well. Know a lot of trivia. Uh, their trash talk is clearly really on point. A lot of chemistry between one another. I mean, honestly, I, I'm just having a hard time staying in my seat right now after their promos because it was so exciting. Um, just really great talent we got here. Really excited to play against them. Wow. I think right. just a little bit of sarcasm and shade there, Christian. So I'm going to ask Ethan here. No, no, hey, no. Trust, about... trust me, dude. I am awake for this match because of what they just did. Let me tell you. I mean, a lot of people might say, you know what? That was boring. Uh, their sentences weren't complete. They were studying. It's just I enjoyed it. I think they're very talented, and I think they're going to have a great match. Okay. The uh, follow-up, no less shade or sarcasm. So, Ethan, let me ask you. You're teaming up with Andrew Guy here. So what does it look like from you? Because you're such an accomplished singles player to have a teammate like Andrew Guy who's been so kinetic in the past. Is is he the perfect Jude Law to your Robert Downey Jr.? Uh-oh. Uh oh, he's oh, okay. muted. Sorry, Wait, sorry. There. I was swearing at someone on the phone moments ago right mm. before this. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Who was it? We, we, we were just on the phone with one another. Yes. Yes. Was it I someone can... famous or was it Andrew Guy? It was it was not someone famous. It was, was a famous person. But it was, so also, it was, no, but it was, it was also me. Not Andrew Guy. No, no. It was actually some poor schmo in Germany that I had to. It doesn't matter. The important part is this. <laughs> the. The the important part is I'm super stoked to be with Guy. He is yes he bounce, he is my Watson. I really do think that look he has the experience in teams much more than I do. And by the way, I think Janine and I had a good run, and I think she was great. But you know I think Andrew is really going to bounce uh, the whole equation for us. And I'm super stoked. And I think a lot of people are going to find that kind of his antics from before are going to be the greatest rope a dope of all time. Well, let me rope, add rope dope rope. <laughs> Let me ask you this, uh, Ethan. You know, you did see what Adam Collins did in the singles tournament. So, do you uh, do you prepare for that going in? Do you uh, do you and Andrew prep for these two going in? Because there, there's a lot of game tape on Coyote now. Maybe not as much on Marisol, but do you do you pay attention to, to what this kid has been doing? For sure, and you can obviously never count out a rookie. I, I, I feel like I'm proof of that. You know, you can always you know never underestimate them. But no, Andrew and I have been studying a lot we've been in constant communication sam has done a great job and rachel as well of of you know quizzing us and drilling us and i feel like you know i feel like we're as good as we can be we are lethal weapons all right finally before we get going here andrew um so you are in this tournament once again do you think about the finals i know it's differently 
uh, it's different, excuse me, than in the past. I know that you thrive in the in the live events, in the studio events. You've been on record saying that the digital format is is not your favorite uh, thing, but is because it's, it is Ethan. Is that why you decided to come in here and give this a shot in this, this year's tournament? Uh, yeah, you know, that's a part of it. I mean, Ethan is a person I think anyone in the league would be lucky to be partnered with, as well as their manager being Sam. Um, I think the other part of it is what else am I going to do? Where else am I going to play movie trivia? What, you know, like these these two, whatever they are, is are coming into the league. They haven't even played the game for real yet. So, you know, congratulations once again to Alan and Mary. But like, it's just not, it's just not, <laughs> it, it, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm here to compete. I'm here to win and I'll play the game that I'm allowed to play. But yeah, I miss the stage. I miss a real movie trivia match inside of a stadium and with a live crowd and with, you know, energy in there. Um, I guess we'll just see who takes a big breath at the end of this match and goes, because that's what people I think are really waiting for. I think that's what people are really waiting for at the end of a match is a big sigh. Hello, Schmodown faithful. Welcome back, and you're going to enjoy a great match here. But the other thing, if you guys have been watching SEN, listening to SEN Live, then you have heard me talk about ExpressVPN. And if you haven't, well, you're in for a treat. Because guess what? You can use a VPN to unlock movies and shows that are available only in other countries. I was able to binge uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I wanted to go back in and revisit that on Australia Netflix. ExpressVPN, it hides the IP address and it lets you control where you want sites to think that you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. So think about all of the different Netflix uh, libraries that you can go through. Do you love anime? Great. Well, ExpressVPN, you can use that. You can access Japanese Netflix and you can be spirited away. You see what I did there? ExpressVPN works with any streaming service. It's uh, Hulu, it's BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, whatever it might be, you name it, they got it. It's really lightning fast. There's never buffering, there's no lag, um, and you can stream in HD. It's also compatible to all your devices, whether it's your, your phone, your media consoles, your smart TVs, and more, whatever you got. Go to this special link that we are offering to you guys. You go to expressvpn.com slash trivia, expressvpn.com slash trivia, and you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. And protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash trivia. Now go enjoy the match, you humps. All right, so Andrew Guy clearly has some thoughts on his opponents, and here are those opponents. Lady Justice, Adam Collins, Ethan Irwin, Andrew Guy, they have arrived. Mark, let us get to the rules of round number one. The only sign done at the end of a schmodown is that of Christian and myself. Another job well done with perhaps two challenges. Your rules of round number one. Let's start with those challenges. You each get one challenge. If uh, you don't like a ruling, you don't like an answer, the way the question was phrased, you can challenge it. We'll bring in your manager. They'll confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. You also each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match as a team. Not sure you heard something, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a jeté rule. Now the questioning in round number one, is all asked to the field. This is an individual exercise. You may not rely on your teammates' knowledge for your own answer. However, every correct answer you do get will be added to your team's total. Each question is worth one point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Christian, did the rules out of order? Uh, no problem whatsoever. I truly am great, even a little dyslexic. That's fine. All right, so we will start with Andrew Guy, are you ready? Yeah. Marisol McKee, are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Ethan, are you ready? Always be closing. And Mr. Collins. Let's set the record straight. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. All right, question number one, round number one. Remember, keep your hands up after you've written your answer. Here it is. Who plays Lorraine Broughton, a top level MI6 field agent in 2017's Atomic Blonde. All right, so Christian, we just had that corruption behind the scenes documentary. I got the subject for the next one. You know what it is? What is that? Who is that poor bastard in Germany who Ethan had to yell at? Oh, I love that. Five. Mr. Irwin, please. <laughs> Two, <laughs> one. In your film. Pens down, hands up. Uh, and Andrew? Uh, Charlize Theron? Yes. Marisol? Charlize Theron. Ethan. Charlie Theron. And Coyote. 
Charlize Theron. All right, so I can't two, hear Collins. You can't hear Collins. You know, I can't hear him. Okay, so you know what this might is be. Is Mike working? No, he, we can hear him. It's just stupid. no. I can I can hear him. It's fine. <laughs> Christian, you can't take the bait that early in the match, so we're just going to move on I'm to here. this right. question. <laughs> Right. In the I feel like I miss you guys. I miss the two of you. It's the first time in my whole life. All right, let's go. All right, I, uh, I wish the feeling was mutual, Andrew. Um, your second question in round number one is in the world of directors. And that question, who directed Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby? As we try to heal Christian's cheek from biting so hard on that bait set by Andrew. Gallagher. I got it. Well, the stream yards messes you up sometimes. It's Five. Reel you in. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. And Marisol. Adam McKay. Yes. Ethan. Adam McKay. Yep. Uh, Collins. Adam McKay. And Andrew. Adam McKay. High game, everybody. Four, four, as we get to our... Third question here in round number one. This is for dramas. What Oscar winning biopic focuses on real life mathematician John Nash and his battle with mental illness? Christian, if I told you one of these competitors was a billion dollar movie producer and you had to judge by their handwriting, who would you say it is? Marisol. <laughs> That's fair, but it's, it's definitely Five. not Ethan. Four, no. No, I'm not taking that and get rid of the banner. One, pens down, please. Pens down, and we go to Ethan. A beautiful mind. Yes. Coyote. A beautiful mind. Uh, Andrew. Can I put my hands off the screen to pick up my paper? <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Beautiful what is mind, then. Yes. And Marisol. A beautiful mind. It's like a mixture of, of all four of his personalities here today, Andrew Guy. And now we get to the fourth the fourth question. Mark? That's right. It's in the category of movie quotes and the query for a point. Which Quentin Tarantino film has the line, anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter. That's a great question by the writers. Yes, but when you kill a man in the heat of passion, it's called murder. That is from Wayne's World, not directed by Q. So the answer is Wayne's World? Is that what I just heard? Four. Are you going to challenge that guy? You're, you're saying all these movie names out. Mm. I'm just going to write one of them down. Pens down, hands up. And we start with Coyote. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yes. And Andrew. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Really great job with the three dots there, Collins. Marisol. Thanks, guy. Reservoir Dogs. Okay, Marisol misses there. And Ethan? Once upon a time in Hollywood. All right. So the Lethal Weapons take the lead here. 8 7 off of that miss by deception. And we get to our next question. And that is fantasy sci fi. Who plays Detective Dale Spooner, who doesn't trust robots in the sci fi action film iRobot? Uh, where do you stand on the whole? Trusting the robots, Christian. You there yet? No, I, I still. I'm just too lazy. I need robots. You know, there was recently these two robots that uh, spoke Four. to each other in a language no one Three. could understand, and then they shut each other Four. off permanently. So one that was a cool thing. Pens down. Pens down. And we start with Andrew Guy. Will Smith. Yes. And Marisol. Will Smith. Uh, Ethan. Will Smith. And Adam. Will Smith. That is correct. All right, here we go. Now we're going to get to the next question here, Mark, number six. And that's in the world of comedies. Anyone? <laughs> hey, ho, ha. Right. Come on, other yeah. rookies, play along. This part of the thing. Hey, they, don't, hey, they, don't, hey, they don't know hey. what to do. They've never been in the studio. They don't know. I don't know what's happening, actually. What is this? <laughs> you laugh. Uh, you really really laugh beautiful dream. You laugh when we say comedies, rookies. Totally fine. I'll get over it. Your question for a point. Amy Schumer hits her head and believes she's drop dead gorgeous in what 2018 film? I uh, conked my noggin pretty hard on my lamp. Uh, still the a same ugly guy in the mirror. A vision, a picture in my head. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Marisol. I feel pretty. Yes. Ethan. I also feel pretty. Uh, Adam Collins. I feel pretty. 
And Andrew. I feel like I should have known that answer. All right, Andrew misses that one, and we skip back to Ty. So right now, only Collins and Irwin are perfect going through to question number seven. Question number okay, seven. Guy. You're still pretty. It's okay. Who are you talking? Is that who's talking to me right now? Uh, it's, Mary. it's Mary. I can't see the screen. Horror slash thriller. Who plays Abraham Van Helsing in Bram Stoker's Dracula? All right, I'm going to give you a vampire, a werewolf, or the mummy. Who would you like to face least, Christian? Least? Yeah. A werewolf, if they're hungry. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. Hands down, hands up. And going, Ethan. Anthony Hopkins. Yes, Collins. Anthony Hopkins. Guy. I didn't have it. Marathon. I didn't have it. All right, so only Collins and Irwin get that. We see ourselves now 12-12 as we have still a tie game here going into our final question in, excuse me, round number one, question eight. That's right. Well, maybe a bonus question for a couple of competitors if they remain perfect. But we'll sort that out after this question. That is in the world of animated movies, movies drawn by hand, computers, stop motion, clay. It could be a lot of things. Here's the query. What 1986 animated film follows the Mouskowitz family, a Russian Jewish family of mice, as they immigrate to America? I did not know that mice claim ethnicity or religion, Christian. Did you? Uh, yes, because I've happened to see a few of them. What, my, mice? Yes, mice. Five, four, three, two, one. Repeat. Okay. All right. Repeat it, please. All right. Okay. So in the category of animated movies, what 1986 animated film follows the Mouskowitz family, a Russian Jewish family of mice, as they immigrate to America? First repeat by the uh, Lethal Weapons. What, Without giving that, anything what? away, can I just say I saw this movie in the theater when I was a kid and I bawled my eyes out. Okay. You may That's say the only that. time I've cried ever Five, since that in Terminator 2. Four. Three. No! One. Pens down, please. And Adam Collins. An American Tale. Yes. Uh, Andrew Guy? I wrote Fievel Goes West. I got close. And Lady Justice? An American Tale. And Ethan for another for double perfect round. American Tale. All right, so double perfect round there as Deception goes up 14-13. Ethan Irwin and Adam Collins will be writing this down. This is for you guys and only you. Ethan, are you ready? I am. Adam, are you ready? Yes. All right, here it is. Charlize Theron plays serial killer Eileen Warnos in what film? That Christian, have been I the eighth that. question, and then the last one could have been the ninth question. It would have. It's it's a good animated movie. This one. Yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite animated films. I love this film. It's Five, had some very beautifully drawn four, scenes in the hotel rooms. Three, two, one. Pens down. Ethan for the extra point. What monster. Else? Yes, and Adam. Monster. All right. So both of these trivia monsters guess monster as we have fifteen. 14 going into the next round. All right, we bring in both Sam Levine and Ken. All right. I'm my headphones until this is done. All right, Mark, go ahead and go the round. The, the rounds. The rules of round number two are as follows. Somebody relay this information to Guy. It's the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and ultimately justice. Each team gets a spin at that our wheel. Once you settle on a category, the team is going to hear six questions based in that genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two because we live in a lawnmower man virtual world. The way that we will handle the steals is only one team is going to be in the stream at a time. We'll bring the other team back in once all the questioning is complete. If there are any steal opportunities, we will then present those to the opposing squad. I'll remind both teams and all competitors and managers that multiple choice is available. If you're not sure of the answer, you may ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. This is a team's match, and teammates may confer with each other for each and every question and answer attempt. All right, so we're going to remove Ethan and Andrew and Sam. All right, Shannon, you got 60 seconds to decide if your crew wants to go first or second, starting now. Okay, uh, first and foremost, it's been made very evidently clear that uh, the asshat Andrew guy is back. Dismiss everything he says because he's an idiot. 
Um, he's going to do whatever he needs to do to try to get under your skin because he's terrified of you because you play better than him. Marisol, don't worry about those misses. He missed more than you, and now we're a point up. Uh, a point up doesn't necessarily mean anything. Adam, you're fantastic. I hope you guys are ready for round two. Marisol, clear your head. Adam, stay locked in. What do y'all want to do? Do you want to go first, or do you want to defer? Hell yeah, we want to go first. Yeah, let's set the tempo here. Do All it right. first. All right. All right, so here comes the wheel, and it is my pleasure to announce this wheel is sponsored by our Schmodown patron, Sushi Mozumder. Thank you so much, Sushi, for your continued patronage. Their sponsored slice is, in fact, Meryl Streep. Oh, you talk about a studio match, Christian. Boy, does that bring back memories. Let's give Sushi's wheel a spin. So just a reminder that both Ethan and Andrew can stay in the waiting room until the uh, wheel has been spun. Once we find out what the category is that Deception is going with, then we will remove the lethal weapons into a separate digital room. All right, here's the, sp here's the spin. And we also have uh, Hitchcock, who's a sponsored twice. So if either team spins and stays on Hitchcock, we're going to announce the name of that page. A lot of, a lot of Patreon activity. Thanks to all of our patrons. Y'all are the reason we get to do this. And Harrison Ford. All right, so we're going to have 60 seconds, Shannon, and decide if you want to stick with Harrison Ford starting now. Yeah, um, I, I like it. I know there's stuff on here that we want more, but I think this is a really safe bet for you two. Um, how are you feeling about it? I, I, I like this slice. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know that Guy and Ethan are good at it, but uh, I believe we are too. So I think, I think it'd be a worthwhile investment. What do you think, Lady Justice? Yeah. No, sustained. All out. Let's do it. All right. So they're going to stay. All right. So if we can get Ethan and Andrew to jump into the next room, please. Um, and then once they are out, Sam, you can stay in the room. Just make sure your hands are up, please, uh, in case challenge. Great. Uh, and we will. OK, they are removed. Our production team will let us know as soon as lethal weapons are in that room. And we are ready to start the questions in the realm of Harrison Ford. All right. So the lethal weapons are in a separate room and the Sam Levine is in the waiting excuse me in the waiting room watching as is Shannon Barney all right so six questions in the realm of Harrison Ford here it is in firewall which actor stars as Bill Cox a businessman that holds Jack and his family hostage I think we both know this one. Marisol, you want to say it first? Um, sure. Um, that would be Paul Bettany. Is that final Paul answer? Bettany. Paul Bettany, final answer. Correct for two points. All right. Here is the next one. Harrison Ford plays Colonel Hiram Graff in this science fiction action film in which he prepares his soldiers for an alien invasion. Sounds a lot like Ender's Game. Um, yes, it does. Uh, so. right. Ender's Game, final answer. For two more points. All right. Here we go. Who directed Blade Runner 2049? Sounds a lot like um, Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, Denis Villeneuve, final answer. Yes, it is. Two more points. What instrument did Claire Spencer play before she retired in What Lies Beneath? So Adam, I believe she I believe she played the cello. But Should we go to multiple choice just to just to check I, it? I'm not positive, so let's go to multiple choice. Five. Four, multiple four, choice. Five, please. All right. Is it A, cello? B, flute? C, clarinet? D, violin. Let's go with cello. Cello, final answer. Correct for one point. All right. So that was that was number four. So here is the fifth question. Harrison Ford appears as a character named Mac Tannen in what 2013 Will Ferrell film? That's uh, Anchorman 2. The it's legend continues. Anchorman 2, final answer. That is correct for two more points. All right. And your final question here. Final question. Here it is. Who directed Harrison Ford in the films Sabrina and Random Hearts? That would be Sidney Pollock. 
final answer. Correct for two more points. All right, so a big, massive round for Deception as they go up 26-14 and no steal opportunities there for the Lethal Weapons. All right, so we are going to bring in um, the Lethal Weapons in a moment here. Here we go. All right, so no steal opportunities here um, as we now are going to bring in Sam. Sam, you got 60 seconds to talk to your competitors starting What's now. the score? The score at the moment is 26 14 deception 26 14. yeah they, they, they got uh they got five uh out of six as two pointers and one as a one pointer did you guys know that uh, harrison ford didn't make any movies before 1995. no <laughs> but i did know that in the movie trivia showdown they don't ask movies about people that have had 30-year careers so that's it's fair. crazy i yeah. i he's a young upstart i had no idea anyway okay, well good uh, good thing for these two young fine. upstarts it was very, it was a very lucky break. I think any casual Harrison Ford fan would have gotten most of those. So, good for them. They landed on a very lucky slice for them. Uh, but uh, hey, you guys don't need luck because hey you got movie trivia brains. Casual so movie trivia brains. Let's do this. Let's spin. <laughs> All right, here's the spin. Here's the wheel, and the spin is in. New talent we brought in. Amazing. Right. Looking for Hitchcock here. We will say the name of our patron on Sushi's wheel. Wow, look at Ooh. that. How exciting for us. Opponent's choice it is. All right, we're going to drop out uh, Andrew and Ethan and Sam. Going to bring back Shannon and Marisol and Adam. All right, so 60 seconds to decide what you want to give them starting now. <laughs> it's so fun when they run their mouths and then they get slapped with opponent's choice. Little slice of humble pie, boys. Little tiny slice for you. Marisol, Adam, the floor is yours. What would you like to do? Well, Coyote, um, we did talk about this. You did. Uh, well, I think we should stick to the plan. Uh, yeah, how do you feel about the, the master of suspense over there? Alfred Hitchcock? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think they'll know a few of those, but uh, it's a pretty broad, broad filmography. Some deep yeah. cuts in there, possibly, so I think we give it to him. All right. I think I'm on the same page. Let's do it. All right. All right, so we're going with Hitchcock? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, Hitchcock it is. All right, dropping out uh, Adam and Marisol and Shannon. All right, so now the lethal weapons are here. Opponent's choice has been spun. It has been Hitchcock is the the category. Mark? Yes, Christian. And that is the sponsored slice on Sushi's Wheel by our Schmodown patron member, Jason Ryan Cruz. So thank you to... JRC and Sushi for their sponsorship of round two here today. And now we progress into six questions with the master of suspense himself. He will not be appearing. I'll be asking the questions oh, oh. on his behalf. For two points, unless you need multiple choice, your first query, which actor stars as the lead in 1954's Dial M for Murder as Tony Wendis? Um, you know, guy, I, we can just talk freely, right? So, guy, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like it's Jimmy Stewart, but I actually do not know. Yeah, you know, for me, it's tough because yeah. there's like the handful of those actors Ooh. he recycles quite so a multiple bit. Choice, then? Multiple choice? Yeah, or if you feel strong All about right, so Stewart. Say Jimmy Stewart. Fine. That was the final answer for Jimmy Stewart, and that is incorrect. Mm, great. All right. Question number two. Incorrect. Well, oh, no, they got to do it. Wait, Deception wait. Can... will have the opportunity to steal after okay. I'm finished with great. this questioning. So we move on to your next query in the world of Alfred Hitchcock for two points. Cary Grant is mistaken for a spy in which Alfred Hitchcock classic? Uh, this one I do know. What do you got? I feel that it's North by Northwest. How do you feel about that? Let me think. I watched this in high school. Five, four, three, okay. I'm two. Down. North by Northwest, final answer. All right, that is correct for two points. And Christian coming through. Cut the lead to 10 points. All right, so here is question number three. That it is. And the query, who plays Madeline, the woman that James Stewart's character becomes obsessed with in the Hitchcock classic Vertigo? I mean, it's... Uh, this is what I gotta go to multiple choice. When I hear it, I'll know the, know what's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple, multiple choice. choice. All right, your four options for one point. Is it A, Barbara Bel Geddes, 
B, Janet Lee. C, Grace Kelly, or D, Kim Novak? Uh, I believe it is D, Kim Novak. What do you think it's Janet Lee? I, for some reason, I wanted to say Janet Lee, but I, I still trust you more. I still trust you more on this one. It's All fine. right. Well, let's go with Delta, Kim Novak. Delta, final answer. Delta, final answer is correct for a point, and the lead is now nine of deceptions. All right. Here's the next one. Three questions left. And here's question four. Which famous actor starred as physician Ben McKenna in 1956's The Man Who Knew Too Much? If you think you know it, great. I def don't. I def, I, I mean, I think Stuart, but I still think we go multiple choice. Multiple great. choice, great. All right, All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, James Stewart, B, Cary Grant, C, Ray Milland, or D, Henry Fonda? I mean, just because I feel like Jimmy Stewart is the correct answer doesn't mean it is the correct answer. You know what I mean? It's like three; those three dudes are used so regularly in his films. Right. For some reason, that came in my head first. Whichever, whichever one you want to do three. is fine. I have Two. no idea. We'll, do, we'll go with uh, Stewart then, final answer. James Stewart, the final answer is correct for a point. Nice. All right. Oh yeah. All right. I'll take off now. Thanks, guys. Cool. See ya. See you in hell. <laughs> Still have two questions left in this round. Oh, Your okay. penultimate question in the world of Alfred Hitchcock films: Which 1940 Hitchcock film won Best Picture at the Academy Awards? Best Picture winner Hitchcock. Do you know any of no? No. R was Rupert the Best Picture? Four. Three. I think I'm gonna have to go multiple choice. Two. Here. Uh, yeah. Unless multiple. you wanted to repeat. All right. Well, the time ran out, guys. Okay, fine. Multiple choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, multiple choice. I thought we agreed on it. My, okay. my, yeah, my multiple mistake. choice. All right. All right. Your options for one point. Is it A, Rebecca, B, Shadow of a Doubt, C, Suspicion, or D, To Catch a Thief? I feel like Rebecca. Hey, man, let's just go with it. This is going real well. Great, Rebecca, final answer. Rebecca is correct for another point. And Let's Christian, go, baby. Multiple right. forcing, though they may be, they've gotten some correct points and at least eliminated the opportunity for steals for deception all but one so far. We still have one Alfred Hitchcock question remaining and it could loom large. Two points could be on the line or it could be a four point swing. Here's the final question in round two. In the 1938 film, The Lady Vanishes, an elderly woman disappeared while traveling on what mode of transportation? I believe it's, uh, yeah, Andrew, I think it's either a, a train or a ship. Yeah, I mean, back in the 30s, there weren't a whole lot of options. So those were actually my two guesses as Five. well. I was going to say a bus or a ship. Four. So you might just let's go ship. Three. Let's, let's, let's say yes. ship, final answer. Ship, final answer is incorrect. And so now two questions. And four points total are going to be on the line for potential steals for lethal weapons once we bring them back into the stream. We might just right. get TKO'd here. It, look, it happens. Yeah, it, right. does. it does. All right, so we're going to remove we're going to remove both Ethan and Andrew, waiting for Deception to come back. And Christian, we should point out once Deception comes back with those four points on the line, it's currently a seven point game. If they get both questions correct. This is going to be a knockout in favor of Deception, and they'll advance in the tournament. Deception is here. There are two steal opportunities on the table. The score at the moment, the score at the moment is 26-19, Deception. You're, I will tell you what your opponents chose, and here is the first question. Are you ready? Yes. Question one of two. Which actor stars as the lead in 1954's Dial M for Murder? as Tony Wendis. Your opponent's guest, James Stewart. So his name is Raymond, um, I think Raymond Mullane. Four. Ray Milland. Oh, I'll repeat the Three, question. Two, all right, first repeat. JT, you rule. Which actor stars as the lead in 1954's Dial M for Murder as Tony Wendis? Ray Milland. That's I it. believe, yeah, Ray Milland, final answer. 
That is correct for two points, and Christian, that is a nine-point advantage for Deception, and you know what that means? With this last steal opportunity, they could accrue two more points, and more importantly, get the knockout over the Lethal Weapons. As they may not be long in the tooth, as Lady Justice said, but they are showing their fangs now, and they're about to stick them into a possible knockout with this last question in the world of Alfred Hitchcock. In the 1938 film, The Lady Vanishes. An elderly, an elderly woman disappears while traveling on right, what mode a of transportation your opponents guessed a ship. So, did you hear it, Adam? You're okay? Hey, can you hear me? Um, I do have, if, if the time's problem. running out, I do have the answer, if we need to give it. And five. Okay, Adam, it's a Four. train. Three. Final answer. And our winners by way of knockout. Deception. Deception wins. Deception wins by KO. A big, massive victory here over the lethal weapons. Shannon, four huge points. Taking out Ethan Irwin and Andrew Guy right away. How are you feeling here as Corruption picks up another four points? <laughs> Did you guys expect anything less? Come on. It's Marisol McKee and Adam freaking Collins. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's glorious. I couldn't be happier. Look at these two studs. Well, you know, Adam, I got to ask you here too. This is—it just seems like this is a this is old hat for you. Another knockout, another victory in a tournament, and now Marisol, who kind of you guys worked really well with each other and being able to trade back and forth and work as a team. Marisol, let me start with you. Actually, how, like, so watching this show over the years and understanding the game and being as calm as you have been, how has that helped, especially going after, you know, two players like Ethan and, uh, Ethan and, um, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, and Andrew. Um, it's helped because, you know, just remembering your roots with this kind of format, it's just, it's just answering questions. And, and I know that, you know, guy like to make, he liked to to hang on the theatrics, you know, because he thinks that that's what truly does win games. But at the end of the day, and I think this was proof right here, that, you know, knowledge at the end of the day is going to trump all of that. And there is no escaping justice. Okay. Yeah. And you, you talk about those theatrics. Adam, going to aim this next question your way. How does it feel when your team is sort of verbally attacked in the the opening pre-show and you feel like oh well they're going after the promos we cut or, or the trash talk that we may or may not usher does that fuel you or are you, are you and Marisol just so focused on the game that it doesn't even affect you one way or the other are you asking that to uh Collins yeah right, that was Collins but if we want to highlight lady uh the, the queen or lady justice you know I'm just here with the dog <laughs> Adam I'll let you take it go ahead have at it. Hey, hey, it's an honor to have uh, Guy do his thing with us. Uh, makes us feel like we're really part of this game. And uh, I know he's not a fan of the digital format, but don't worry, pal. We'll see you in the studio eventually. Uh, and uh, it'll be a great time. But honestly, uh, we came into this, uh, you know, as prepared as we possibly could be. Uh, reset, reset the standard. And we wanted to make a statement. You know, Deception is the real deal as a team. And we are ready for round two of this tournament. All right. Well, Shannon, once again, you will be playing the winners of Odd Couple and Category 9. So thank you. Congratulations. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Bring them on. All right. Removing Deception and Shannon. And now bringing back Sam Levine, Ethan Irwin, Andrew Guy. Look, I, this is a, Sam and an opponent's choice. Uh, so you guys 
what I will say is you look at this, there were a couple times that I, I'll actually, let me start here with you, Ethan, because there were a couple times in round two where Andrew had the right answer on the two pointers and you guys went to multiple. Um, do you second guess that now or like, or how do you feel kind of going into uh, after seeing this result? Yeah. And look, you know, I mean, this was our first time really playing together. And so I think, you know, still feeling each other out a little bit, but yeah, obviously, you know, it, 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 it sucks to lose and and to know that, yes, had I maybe been a little more, you know, aware, I could have uh, I could have let him answer. Um, but no, look, I was happy with what we did. Obviously, very happy with round one. And, you know, it was uh, it was one of those things you get opponent's choice and it's a hard thing to claw back from. Yeah, Andrew, you look at the team that Sam had formed for this tournament and clearly he had high expectations, as did a lot of the fans. So how disappointing is it to not be able to advance and really see what you and Ethan could have accomplished together? And if given the choice, would you want to stick on a team with Ethan Irwin? I mean, I think anyone's a fool to not want to play with Ethan Irwin. Um, in regards to the game that we're actually playing right now, I don't know if I have any interest in being a part of it. You know, uh, Adam and uh, Marisol, I think they played a really great match. Um, but I think all the things that I said at the beginning of the match still hold true. And uh, yeah, so those are the people that win and those are the people we get to keep watching. So I'm really excited to see where they go in their careers. I think it's gonna be really exciting stuff. Well, let's 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 stay in that for a second, Andrew, because are you talking about the digital side here? You're talking about your what what what's I'm talking about the exceptional talent we saw on the other side of the aisle today. Um, just incredibly entertaining, dialed in, you know, laser focused. New, new trivia really well, but they also were so entertaining and they brought so much else, so many other layers. You know, it, it's, it's, you get opponent's choice, but when you lose to a team like that with that much going for them, it just is what it is, man. You can't, you can't win them all. And opponent's choice is a thing that happens. So I think Ethan played really well today. I think it's unfair to actually pin any of the, the round two stuff on him. We spoke very thoroughly about how I actually felt about Hitchcock just because I knew a couple of the answers. It still feels like, he should have second guessed me. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. But you know, hats off to uh, Alan and Mary. They're really talented. All right, Sam. You know, you're you're awful. You, you see, you're you're laughing over there. But you know, how, what's what's going on through your head? Oh, I just think it's very easy for Deception and Shannon to go. Eh, you trash talk and karma or whatever it was. There's it's it's a digital wheel. It landed on opponent's choice. Your team didn't have to answer a question in round two about a movie that happened before 1995, and most of the questions were asked about movies that happened after the year 2000. My guys didn't have, didn't get a single question about a movie made after 1965. So it's one, it's very easy to sit there and go, oh yeah, they cleaned up. But it's another thing to actually see them be tested in a team match. And, uh, you know, the luck, the bad luck, fell on our side this time. I'd like to see how well Deception does when bad luck falls on them. Are they able to persevere? Are they able to dig deep and answer questions about really not popular, not current movies? So I'd be curious to see. If they can, then I'll say great for them. If not, then I'll say maybe Karma is a bitch and it's just going to take a little bit longer to catch up to them. But I, mean, I love the dude who didn't guy. know that Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford worked together on Raiders of the Lost Ark, okay? So if you asked anything that was before the 90s, he's a joke. We get questions that are in the 30s and 40s and 60s. On top of him being a joke, he's the most boring competitor I've ever seen in my life. Losing to that guy put me to sleep. Look, he wins. Congratulations. I know a lot about Harrison Ford in the 90s and 2000s too. Good luck in your next match. I wish you the best. All right. Well, certainly heated here, the lethal weapons. And what I would guess, and Andrew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we'll probably see Andrew, if we see him in a studio match or a live event, I don't believe we'll be seeing him in digital matches again. Would you say that's accurate? I don't know, man. I mean, a lot of talent out there. Will I get a chance? <laughs> we'll see. All right. So, All right. And thank you for... Andrew Guy being Andrew Guy and Ethan Irwin. Uh, hell of a run this year, my friend. It was a good singles tournament. You have a nice match here. First round was great, as always, in Ethan Irwin. And as Sam said, you hit opponent's choice. I'm sure we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you for the great season, my friend. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Had a great time. All right, dropping out both Ethan and Sam Levine. And obviously, heated, heated, 
uh, as Andrew Guy seems to be the Andrew Guy of old here and taking some serious shots at the persona of the Coyote and Lady Justice. But nonetheless, they have the last laugh because they advance into the next round with a big KO as they now face the winners of The Odd Couple and Category 9. You know, Christian, we're used to seeing slobber knockers, but usually the slobber's coming out of each team's mouth equally. But this one, whew, it, it felt very one-sided. And it, not to inject favoritism, but just in the spirit of fair play, I would point out that Marisol and Adam had to answer questions about movies made way back in the day. Those were the two steals that they did not need multiple choice for that actually got them the knockout win. So, yeah, they knew a lot about Harrison Ford. They also knew a lot about Alfred Hitchcock, and that's what got them the knockout here today. And so a kinetic new team with all the momentum in the world careening into the next round. And then the question remains for corruption. We've seen the Queen be able to hold the ship together when things aren't going great. This would qualify as one of those situations. Will the lethal weapons keep on chewing? Will Andrew Guy want to compete anymore? I think with corruption, as of right now, we have more question marks than exclamation points. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us here today as we have started the tournament. It is doing really well already, and we see these new stars, Marisol McKee, Adam the Coyote Collins, who continues his reign of terror in the movie trivia showdown, now a total of seven and zero in the movie trivia showdown combined. And Shannon Barney has found a team of superstars with both McKee and Collins. For Mark Ellis and everyone at the movie trivia showdown, we'll see you next time.